that? <laughs> nice looking person. Mutant uh, autochtones. And where was that? Uh, going to the underbelly here. Oh, and we also had to talk to the changing god cultists again. Well, let's do that. About our lookalike. Right, um, who did you say could lead me to the repair of the resonance? Yeah. What can you tell me about other castoffs? She smiles and laughs. We have spent years compiling our records, revered one. I know the time seems as nothing to your kind, but we must protect our knowledge. Perhaps if you were to join our group, provide some of our, your experience to add to your knowledge. I've repaired the clock. <laughs> Well, um, what are the benefits of joining your church? And he steeples his fingers. We can provide our adherents with useful items. Oh, I don't need items. I need, I need info. We can offer safety against the depredations of those who would harm them as they sleep. Our members may be available to aid each other in specific situations. Um, hmm. I'm not sure. I'd like to join the group. Not yet. Let's say farewell and just hurry down in the underbelly helping the students. And maybe finding the white death. Should we join them? Is that something we should do? I'm against joining that on, on first notice. Maybe we'll join the Dendra Oho and become knowledge eaters. What is what is that here? Wow. <laughs> Don't know. Undiscernible. Underbelly thugs and a headless men. Let's talk to the headless men. Is that even possible? So Headless man. There's something here. What is that? Something hidden, it seems. A bista. What is a bista? Let's look into that. Inventory. Bista fettel. The moss-covered pebble looks almost ordinary, and if it were lying on the ground, it would be difficult to spot, but the moss shifts in unexpected ways, and the pebble vibrates as it does. If swallowed, the moss dissolves inside you to release its energies. Right? Let's talk to Manth Pa. This lissom jack looks down on his luck, judging from his bare feet and dusty jerkin, but he takes in his surroundings with a hopeful gaze. As you approach, he smiles and throws out his arms in greeting, which reveals the tools of his trade on his belt. How now? Help me eat, got any? He stops as he sees Tiber with you. Tiber, he bellows. Good to see you. Last I heard, you and Riss were coming, running from the levees. Slipped them again, eh? This your new crew, looking for an in and out man. I'm free at the moment and ready and able to do some crimes. Tybeer, for the briefest of seconds, Tybeer looks like he wants to throttle the life out of you, the young man. Then he laughs, month, my boy, always joking. Puts an arm around the young man's neck and snucks him in a little too tight. If you're not careful, some law-abiding person is going to think you're serious and call the watch on you and me. And no, this is not my new crew, this is my friend, who I am helping find her way around the pitfalls of our great city. Tybeer turns to you. Menth is actually the most honest boy in Sega's Cliffs, aren't you, Menth? He swallows. Uh, I, yes, I am. They don't come much honester than Menth Pa. I pretty much sit around here all day, thinking of ways I could be more on. Tybeer's meaty palm covers Menth's mouth. That's fine, lad. That's fine. He smiles at you. You know, Menth has the most dangerous job in Sega's Cliffs. He's a window washer, hangs out over the sea faces of those cliff houses and scrubs away without a care. 
And if that weren't enough, he's not when he's not working, he's down in here in the underbelly, helping people find their way around. Go on, just ask him. He knows everything about the place. That's right, says Manz, as Tybil lifts his hand. Ask me anything. You want to hear about the people who live here? Maybe the Sticha tunnels, or the manufactory, or those crazy Dendra whore bastards? Give me your general take. The underbelly? He shrugs. It's the bottom of the ladder. As they say around here, there ain't no more down to go. But that's a good thing, right? Means you've got nowhere to go but up. Passing thought dims his cheery expression, unless you drown or get swallowed by the bloom or something. Tell me again what you think of the underbelly. Mm. It's a fine place to start, but I wouldn't want to end here. Tell me about the people here. He blows out his cheeks. Well, I won't talk about everyone. There's a lot of us here, but I'll hit the highlights or lowlights, I guess. He starts to count them off on his fingers. That's fulsome, of course. He runs things around here, not officially, mind you. He's just the sharpest check and with the hardest crew is all. Michella, who sells bits and bobs at her stall. Merk, the meat monger who sells on meat. He pats his chest. Tell Merk I sent you if you pay him a visit. He gives me a shin for each referral. Uh, let's see, there's Elegon, the Aeon priest who isn't anymore but still knows his stuff. Mapper, crazy carker, who's covered in maps and uh, he pauses thinking. Elegon is down here, all right. And well, I suppose that's it. What with crooked Queek dead? Spreads his hands. Yep, that's all worth mentioning. What do you know about the Sticha tunnel? They've dug them all over the place around here. You only see the ends of them, since they fill them with that loose dirt that only they can dig through. What about the manufactory? The heart of industry in Sega's cliffs. People think only the crazy and the crooked live down here in Underbelly. But if you want to see the hardest working people in the city, go look in at those furnaces. That's real work, that is. Tell me more about the Dendra or Hall. The cannibals, ha! Huh? Sometimes I think they do it just so they can be crazier than anybody else. I know they got some kind of mumbo jumbo reason for doing it, but I think they just like making people squirm, you know. <laughs> They're the punks here, all right. And uh, do you know anything about the murder in the underbelly? Now that is some spooky effluvium, no mistake. Circle of blood on the wall, but all they found of the wick was a skinless hand. It happened in that alcove on the other side of the structure, if you want to see it. Do you know where I can find someone named Matkina? The White Death? <sighs> he whistles. You ain't crazy, are you? He lifts his hand placatingly. Sorry, sorry, none of my business. I couldn't tell you where she is, but you might want to talk to Mappa. He's squatting in one of the shanties down here. If there's any place she can hide, he'd know about it. Um. Farewell and thank you. Keep it high, Sid. There's a mutant here. There's Elegon. This device appears to store nano spirits and states of energy. It is dusty and unused. This machine collects and collates a variety of samples, preparing a full analysis of their physical, psychic, and dimensional properties. A pair of gauntlets sits on the table. They look as though. They're intended to provide real-time analysis and physical monitoring of any human arm placed inside. Let's talk to Aligon, shall we? Or let's look at this collection here first. On the shelf is a collection of waver-thin slides containing cross-sectional cuts of living tissue. Some of the flesh still squirms. So, how has fate been treating you? I've already told you I want nothing to do with this Harridan. You bring her to my door, ditch her someplace, and maybe then we can talk. Till then, peddle yourself somewhere else. There's quite a number of things around here. Oh, and a factory worker. Ah, there's something hidden here. Take that. Data's fear whisperer. Ah, 
Hundreds of broken Numenera are piled here. The workers are scavenging them for parts if they are useful, or throwing them into the furnace if they are not. Let's talk to that manufacturing worker that's working on the robot here. There are worse ways to spend the day a bit warm, though. Let's go on with that robot. Master Artisan. At first glance, this ancient and moving construct seems nearly identical to the others in the manufactory. It's only when you move close into the hazy aura of forge light that you see the intricate, no chaotic walls of engravings marking every millimeter of its armored frame, and the worker standing behind it is adding even more. You feel a bubbling sensation in your mind. It must be the construct's surface thoughts, but they are too quick and alien for you to make any sense of them. Morning, the construct says. It is morning, isn't it? I never pay attention to the time. There's not much use for it down here. Firelight twinkles off the construct's blank eyes. I'm artisan. What can I do for you? What's your story? To be honest, I don't like thinking about it. All of us went slightly insane, but the other foreman and I don't dwell on things like Master Foreman does. An ember drifts down from the high ceiling between you. If you want the whole story in excruciating detail, Master Foreman's the one to ask. Why do you have your workers decorating your armor? Because I want to be the most beautiful constructing in Sager's Cliffs, the construct declares. The worker behind it chuckles. Joking, it says, my eyes, well, not eyes, but you know, had failed a long time ago, but my other senses are good, very good. So when my workers want to show me a design, they scratch it out on my plate. I feel it and give them feedback. Not that some of them need it. That's a long time to be blind. What can... Why can't anyone repair you? The easiest answer to that question is, we don't have the parts. Artisan says, then lowers its voice. But the truth is that I'm afraid. Nothing is going to make me blinder, but it falls silent. The forge hisses and pops nearby. Those first decades in the darkness were the hardest, then I started seeing patterns in them. Simple at first, and with colors, death and shade. Grand cyclical designs, it sighs happily. I still see them, and I wouldn't trade them for sight. To be perfectly honest, these artists don't need me anymore. They've done wondrous work in the city above, but they like asking my opinion. Construct barks aloud, and I like giving it. Um, can you show me something your workers have created? Absolutely, hold on a second. Let me get a sense of what might appeal to your tastes. Nested sensors whir into life on its shoulders and beams of light fan over you in the space of a heartbeat. Not so interested in the arts, I see. Lager, get your visitor, get our visitor the contents of Storebox 39. A few minutes later, a stalker hurries out and places a heavy object in your hands. No charge, Artisan says, call it a gift. You gain the globe of Shrull. What's your opinion of your fellow form? Well, I don't like to speak poorly about my family. Construct breaks off and the worker behind it snickers. It's true, they're difficult in their own ways, of course. We argue and here we, means Master Foreman and me. But that's to be expected. We've known one another for millennia, understand? We went through decades of angry silence until we... Well, we learned to accept each other as we are. It chuckles. Master Foreman has beliefs. Exhausting ones that it can't help inflicting on others. And our broken friend wants to die, I think. Puts it... A different way, but it does. And though we bicker, I care for them. How couldn't I, after thousands and thousands of years? Thank you. Goodbye, Arts. I think this is a good time to end this episode, as I think we have explored long enough. There is much to take in here. And, uh,. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. I was standing in a burning manufactory of labor and iron. And uh, next time we will try to find Makeda, try to help the slippers, all of these things to explore more of the underbelly. So thank you for watching. Please come again and watch. Happy gaming to you. This is Emmanuel Kern signing out. See you in the next episode.